Hey gang, Rick with Let's Level Up, and today we're gonna to be talking about the expansion expansion to Belfort. Now this game is actually going to provide a, a new twist on a classic, or I say classic, it's been out in 2012, I think is when it released, but a game that I have actually grown to love in the recent months since having played it and reviewed it on the channel. Uh, the expansion expansion is going to streamline the game just a hair and uh, add in two real new key component mechanics to this game. Uh, first, there's going to be assistants that you can recruit each round, much like guilds, they can't be randomized, or the players can agree on which assistants are going to be available in the game. And this is going to introduce other fantasy creatures into the world of Belfort, like um, giants and halflings and gnolls and hobgoblins. A lot of really cool, really cute. Uh, different uh, creatures are going to join the Belfort universe with this. Uh, and the assistants are going to play kind of like the guilds do, um, but I actually get to pick what assistant I want per month. And um, there's going to be one more assistant than there are players in the game. So every player, in reverse order, is going to pick their assistant, and then that assistant is going to provide some sort of tangible bonus for that round. Um, pretty neat mechanic, and again, just in classic Tasty Minstrel fashion, it's actually executed perfectly. I think it fits with the theme and everything is just so good there. Um, along with assistance, you are going to have the ability to build expansions on properties that you may own. So if I build a pub in a section of the town, I can actually expand that pub with one of the cards here in this deck. Um, and all the expansions are gonna yield a tangible benefit sometime during the game, oftentimes during scoring. So why don't you join me as we open up this box and take a look at what makes the expansion expansion worth getting. So to set up for the expansion expansion, we're gonna to need to do a few things differently. First and foremost, all players are going to have their scoring marker start on six, rather than at the beginning section here. This is gonna put us into an early tax bracket and also make up for the one month lost at the beginning of the game. Now the expansion expansion is going to put us directly into the danger zone, eliminating one month of play at the beginning of the game. So rather than starting with the marker off the clipboard or off the calendar, you're going to start with it on the calendar. So the first calendar phase is actually going to be here rather than here. And again, now we're going to only have six months of play or six turns and every other month being a scoring round. You should also add the new guilds of the expansion expansion to the consideration when selecting the guilds for the next game. A lot of these guilds are going to allow you to gain expansions or have assistance abilities proc. For instance, uh, here we have the Clipboard Makers Guild. Now this allows us to draw one property card and one trading post visit and hire one gnome all for one gold. This is a huge guild to have. Now we have the assistance guild. It says on placement, take the remaining assistant. You may activate it this round as normal. So remember, whenever we're setting up this game, there's gonna be one more assistant than there are players. So if we're playing with three players, there are gonna be four total uh, assistants, and uh, we can only pick one normally. If the assistance guild's out there, some player is going to be able to get another assistant. After that, we have the Decorators Guild. This says, place one gold from the supply under two of your uh, properties. Each gold is worth one half property when scoring. So this allows us to essentially put gold onto the board and then allow us to score that gold extra when we're going to the scoring phases. This is Non-Human Resources Guild. And again, I, I just love the way they do this stuff. It says, on placement, gain three workers. At the end of your action phase, return any three workers to your supply. This allows us to temporarily get workers. And then finally, we have the Planners Guild. It says, take up to two expansion permits for properties you have in play. So if I've already built the Marketplace and the library, I can take the expansion place for each of those buildings and uh, put them in my in my readying area and get them ready for play. Now the two big mechanic changes that come with the expansion expansion are the introductions of assistance and expansions for properties. 
We'll get more on the expansions later. Let's talk about some of the awesome assistance that we can do. First and foremost, we're going to shuffle these at the beginning of the game, and then we're going to deal face down one for each player plus one. So in a two player game, we'll have three, in a four player game, four, so on and so forth. And then we will reveal these like so. And these will actually be allowed to be chosen one at a time, starting with the highest turned player. So if in a two player game, player two would pick first, player one would pick last. In a three player game, of course, it would go three, two, one. Um, they're gonna choose theirs and then the next player would choose theirs, and then there'll always be one remaining unless you have the guild that states otherwise. Each of these assistants, you can do one of two things with them. You can use their special ability, or you can pull an expansion of your choice from the expansion deck. Let's talk about some of the assistants in a little bit more detail here. So the first assistant we're gonna look at is gonna be the Centaur. And the Centaur actually is going to have a place for an extra token, which are designated by these here. You'll take whatever tokens are available. Some of them only have one token. Some of the assistants don't have any tokens. Uh, and some of them have three. Or the, actually, the giant has three tokens, I guess, because he's so dang big. Um, so this is something to keep an eye out for. It's another, again, a green uh, hexagon-shaped thing. And um, let's take a look at these. First, we have we have the awesome artwork again of the uh, and again the tasty menstrual components. Why are they just so good? Um, these are nice, thick components. They're very good, and they feel like just big tokens. And then the artwork on them, I really love the Belfort art style. The hand drawn, really silly comic, silly comic look just works out so well for them. So. Um, the centaur here is going to be cleared for the immediate and actions phase, and his special ability is Gnome Transport. So it says immediately, place one of your own unoccupied gnome locks, unlocking that property's ability for the remainder of the turn. Also, you get a discount of X when hiring a gnome. And at the bottom of these cards, you'll actually see a bonus that you'll get depending on the season that you're in. So these assistants are actually going to get stronger generally as the game goes on. So this allows, again, whenever we're playing, um, at, uh, whenever we're picking our assistant, there's going to be a limited number of assistants to pick from. And depending on our turn order is, is, is how we're actually going to be able to choose which assistants that we're going to get. Now, we can do, again, one of two things. We can play their special ability, which is the, the card text here. Um, and if we do so, we essentially just flip it over to designate that we've actually played it on our turn. Um, so this is something that we can play at any time during our turn. It is an immediate action. Um, we can also search through our expansion deck for an expansion of our choice and play them that way. The next one we have is the giant, and you can see here that there are three tokens that we'll get with him. His is the placement or the uh, plank, or sorry, passing phase, and his ab ability is the assistant speciality um, haulage. Now, this says when you pass stack X giant tokens in one resource area during collection, each token counts as one elf or one dwarf in that area any combination for any collection for majority. Now in spring, X equals one, summer equals two, and autumn equals three. So now each of these actions or each of these tokens is going to give a certain value of workers whenever we're passing with the giant. So at the in autumn, it's essentially the equivalent of having um, nine different workers out there. So. I did that wrong. It says when you pass stack X giant tokens in one resource area. So spring would only be one giant token. Summer would be two giants tokens and th uh, autumn would be three giants tokens. So all three. So those aren't actually multipliers there. I apologize. Uh, the next one we have here are the imps and they're going to be two imps and they are dur used during the placement phase and their specialty is breaking and entering. Very imp like I think. It says place X imp tokens 
Each token must be placed onto an unoccupied, unlocked plank on a built property card belonging to another player. It says, if placed onto an opponent's plank that has a fee, pay the fee to that player instead of to the supply. And it says X here, uh, spring one, summer one, two, autumn. So this allows us to, again, kind of take over people's buildings and not allow them to take that benefit. The goon. The goon says pay X to, um, to place the goon token on a guild plank that's already occupied on an opponent's worker. Both you and the other player will resolve the guild on your own turns. And X equals the normal cost of the guild plus one to the supply. And then summer, normal cost of the guild. And then finally autumn is nothing. So you can just do it for free. And his special speciality is sharing, as you see him cracking his knuckles. Next one is the Gargoyle. Now, the Gargoyle's special ability is Blueprint Drafting. Its actions are at the turn end. And his special ability is, at the end of your turn, tech X property cards of your choice from the discard pile and or the draw pool in any combination into your hand. When you are done, replenish the draw pool if needed. And a spring one, summer two, autumn three. The hobgoblin is corner cutting, um, and he allows you to get a discount of either a wood or a stone twice on the cost of X properties that you build when using property cards from your hand this turn, where X is one in spring, two in summer, and three in autumn. Halfling. Now, the halfling is cooking the books as a specialty, and this happens during the collection slash pay taxes phase. And it says, instead of paying your taxes, X, and then X equals collect one gold, collect, uh, or sorry, pay nothing, and then two, pay two to the supply. So halfling's really good early on in the game, not uh, okay in the middle months, and then uh, you can eventually get a big discount here on Autumn if you have a lot of points and you're in the higher tax bracket. The Djinn. The Djinn is at the actions phase. and it is, Alakazamming is his speciality, uh, naturally. It says exchange X points for X metal or exchange X points for Y, gold, stone, and wood. Any combination of such. Now it says you may use an earlier season's X and Y values. And it says spring, you get X, it's one for one. Sorry, it's a metal, it's three Y, two metal, five Y, three metal, seven Y. So Jen's a good way to get big, big, uh, big, big resources here. For the ex exchange of points. All right, the Pixie has the action adding value, and it says you choose one district to immediately score. First, second, and third majorities earn their points shown below following normal rules for ties. And then it gives the point values depending on the season. One point, no points, two points, one point, no points, three points, two points, one point, depending on your position and the season. And finally, we have the Gorgon. Now the Gorgon is in the placement passing phase and his special ability is Stony Gaze. It says when you pass, place the Gorgon token in any district. During the actions phase, other players must pay X to the supply to build there. If you build there, collect X from the supply. Oh, sorry, it says if you build there, plus X to the supply. And it says a player only pays once per turn, even in multiple items of, uh, are built. And then X equals one, two, or three, depending on the season, of course. So that's a look at the assistance that we'll be able to get. Again, some of them have tokens, some of them don't. And again, you can play their special action or collect an expansion. And let's talk about expansions for a little bit. Now, expansions are buildings that are going to be expanded onto ones that we already have built. So once we've built the pub, if we have the lodge expansion, it can be attached to the lodge and allow us to gain the benefits of that. 
expansions are gonna come in two states. There's the early set expansion, which has the nut, a new plank for you to play on. And then once you've satisfied that planking requirement, there is going to be the uh, full-blown at the end of the game scoring mechanism that's going to trigger. Now each of these buildings has its own unique expansion and actually has a few copies of that expansion that you can use throughout the game. Uh, now depending on the number of players you will need to adjust the starting, I'm sorry, the amount of cards that you'll have in the expansion deck, but generally uh, the mechanisms for you to get expansions will let you pull whatever expansions that you need ad hoc or whenever you need them. Expansion cards are fairly easy to read. We have the building that's going to be associated with this expansion permit. We'll have the placement requirement and then finally the action requirement. So in the, for instance, this case, the market expansion permit of the plaza takes two workers and during our action phase we have to pay either two wood two stone or a combination of each. Now this is actually going to yield one point per guild we control on each scoring phase. And again there are two copies of the plaza. Now the library gives us the archives and this is actually going to require two buildings and it doesn't have any further requirements whenever we place our action or whenever we place a worker there in the placement phase. And again, this is going to give us points for every two property cards that we have. The pool is an expansion onto the inn, and it again takes two and then either a dwarf or an elf. The pool is going to let you earn one point for every complete set of workers you have. That's one elf, one dwarf, and one gnome. The scriptorium is part of the expansions for the tower, and this is going to take one worker here, and then in the actions phase we'll have to pay with a gnome, and then this is actually going to yield one point per expansion that you have built. So the combination of the foundry and the blacksmith is going to require a worker here uh, during the placement phase along with the metal. And then in our action phase, whenever we remove that worker, we'll have to pay another medal. And then for every three medal in each of the buildings that we control, we'll get one victory point on scoring phases. The treasury is going to require a worker here during the placement phase along with a gold. And on our turn, our action phase, rather a wood and a stone uh, in order to accomplish that. And then for every three gold that we have, we'll get one victory point with a maximum of four points per, per scoring phase. The barracks is pretty similar. However, um, this is going to give us one victory point per gate we control. I'm sorry, per wall that we have control of. The pub expansion is going to take a stone with a worker and then two stone during our action phase and then for every five stone that we have split between our buildings we will get one additional victory point. Now the chapel expansion is going to cost us quite a bit of gold having to pay one for the placement plus a worker and then two for our action but it's going to yield the highest amount of victory points potentially each scoring phase giving us one victory point per district that we have a property in. This could be potentially really huge, and there are two of them in here. So potentially, we could be getting 10 per scoring here, which could give us a lot of points. So there are two copies of each expansion within this game. Again, if you're playing with two to three players, you're only going to play with one copy of each expansion. However, if you have more players, feel free to play with the whole deck. Um, the expansion expansion, again, is going to focus pretty heavily on this mechanic here. You can see that these cards are dual sided, um, which I think is really nice. The card stock, again, really awesome stock. I hope you guys liked what you saw in this video and join us, please, for our final thoughts. So that's it for the expansion expansion. Now this game is going to add a lot of new flair to the game. And that's something that I really feel that Belfort excels at, its theme. Now there's a lot of different worker placement games out there, but you're gonna be hard pressed to find one or at least I am hard pressed to find one which with a theme I like as much as Belfort. 
Now, I'd like to clear up something that happened on Board Game Geek recently with our Belfort review video. Um, a lot of players didn't like the fact that I called Belfort a gateway game. I'm actually going to stick to my guns there. I think Belfort is a gateway game because it's so simple to teach novice gamers. Now, I think I describe gateway games as games that you can introduce someone to a genre and then have them find out more about said genre through that game. So this is a great game to introduce people to worker placement games and the expansion expansion is going to add just so much more onto that with the addition of assistance and the expansions for the buildings that we own. So overall, I think the expansion expansion is a great buy for Belfort fans. If you haven't got Belfort already, I strongly recommend you pick that game up. It is so much fun. I'd like to thank Tasty Menchful for giving us the opportunity to take a look at these games and really for taking the time to publish them. This is, this is a really, really fun. Um, all the games I've reviewed from Tasty Menchful so far, I've really loved. And uh, Expansion Expansion is no different. I hope you guys like this video. If you do, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And most importantly, game on.